Hashtag Ask Goji Man, you regularly talk about oxalates on your channel. Please can you do an in-depth review on oxalates and why they can be so damaging in the body? Great question, let's get to it. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. Welcome back, it's good to see you all again. If you haven't met before then, hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing the Masters in Nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. And next year I'll be studying for a PhD in Nutritional Science. I do vegan health and nutrition videos every single day in which I answer your health questions under the hashtag Ask Goji Man. So if you have a question for me then, hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below. Or alternatively, you can send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. And remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you never ever miss any of my videos. Without further ado, to the question. So oxalates and oxalic acid, the acid form, typically comes from one of three sources, either your diet to fungus and often candida. In its acidic form, oxalic acid is probably one of the most acidic and destructive organic acids in the body. And in fact, oxalic acid is used to remove rust from car radiators, so that gives you an idea of its strength. And just while we are throwing interesting facts out there, ethylene glycol, um, or antifreeze as it's commonly known, is extremely toxic in the body because if you are unfortunate enough to ingest it, it converts to oxalates in the body which will kill you even in relatively low doses. Now just to reiterate, oxalates for most people with healthy gut functions are not normally a problem. They will only become a problem if you are guzzling spinach smoothies every day or if you have destroyed your microbiome through antibiotic use or poor diets. Now the average person will usually consume anywhere between 100 and 200 milligrams of oxalates a day in their diets. And to put this into perspective, if you have two cups of spinach in your smoothie a day or a similar high oxalate food, you are likely to be ingesting upwards of 1500 to 2000 milligrams of oxalates just in a single smoothie. So even with a healthy gut function, this coupled with the other oxalate foods you are consuming throughout the day will be way above what most people's bodies and guts can tolerate. And longer term, you are likely to start running into all manner of health issues. And just to give you some perspective here again, if you were to take a dose of around 1500 to 2000 milligrams of oxalates in a day, in which your gut didn't process it and it went straight into your bloodstream, this amount would potentially be a lethal dose. Now for a long time, oxalates were just connected to kidney stones and kidney stones are formed from calcium oxalate. But we now know the potential health implications go way beyond just kidney stones. Now, as I've already said in this video, if you have decimated your gut microbiome through antibiotics, other medications, or even poor diets, then your body will really struggle with breaking down oxalates. So Oxalobacter fomenges, which is one of the main gut bacteria responsible for breaking down oxalates, is easily destroyed through antibiotics, etc. And once it's gone, it is very difficult to get back. And the health implications of this can be wide ranging. Another thing that vegans need to keep in mind is that even if you do have a good gut function, if your intake of calcium is low through your diet, oxalic acid is soluble in the intestines and can then be easily absorbed through the gut and into the bloodstream, which is not what you want at all. And at this point, if oxalic acid is high in the blood, it can combine with blood calcium to form crystals and stones in the kidneys. But as I have already said in the video, kidney stones can be the least of your worries if you have very high levels of oxalates in your body. This here is an oxalate crystal and they can lodge anywhere in the body from the heart which will cause arrhythmias, the bones and joints, they can inhibit bone marrow cells which will then cause anemia, and high oxalates can also suppress your immune function. Oxalates can also inhibit the expulsion of heavy metals from the body, so you can end up with mercury and lead being trapped in your muscles and tissues. And for vegans on high carb diets like myself, high oxalates can also mess up the Krebs cycle glucose metabolism in the body, so then you can start seeing insulin and glucose issues. Now for those of you who have watched my videos for a while, you will know that I had a massive reaction to an antibiotic that messed me up for a good number of years. Now one of the things that it did to me is wipe out my Oxalobacter fomenges bacteria. So when I first got sick and before I knew anything about oxalates, I loaded up on fruits and vegetables thinking they would heal me quickly and they had the opposite effect. They sent my health spiraling. I had heart arrhythmia issues, brain fog, anxiety and panic attacks and many other issues. 
simply because my body wasn't processing the oxalates properly and it was being dumped straight into my bloodstream. It's now very reassuring for me to hear doctors like Dr. Greger acknowledge the dangers of oxalates. Um, but of course, I came across that research, you know, weeks before it actually went online, um, or even months, um, because, you know, uh, all the research that I had to do, and it has to be scripted, and the video design team has to come up with video. But I put it out on social media saying, look, caution, if you're gonna, you know, if you're pregnant, blah, 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 and told people. Um, uh, and so, same thing with this, um, uh, for people who are doing the right thing and eating cups of greens a day, as we all should, dark green leafy vegetables, um, I encourage people to stick to low oxalate uh, dark green leafy, so that's basically all greens, with the exception of beet greens, Swiss chard, and spinach. All those three greens are fantastic greens. I eat all those greens, um, uh, and I enjoy all those greens, but if you're eating cups a day, um, then I would encourage people to, you know, uh, go with kale and collards and arugula and mustard greens, all these other wonderful greens out there, uh, bok choy. Um, and the concern is with kidney stones. Um, the, the video, probably a series of videos will come up about it. Um, and so you can look at all the detail and click on the links and read all the PDFs yourself and uh, make up your own mind. But I just want to give that heads up. That's in the newsletter as well. Now usually oxalate issues go hand in hand with other gut issues such as SIBO, histamine intolerance and salicylate sensitivity. And this is why certain ex-vegans were forced into eating carnivore. They were simply loading the gut with chemicals that weren't being broken down properly which would then cause their health to fall apart. But as I have always said on this channel, the gut is the issue here and not the vegan diet. Fix and heal the gut and remove the bad bacteria and all of these health issues, so IBS, skin issues and anxiety and depression, will go away. Now I learned about my own oxalate issues by taking an organic acids test. I spent three years going from doctor to doctor to doctor and all of my test results coming back normal despite the fact that I couldn't get out of bed. My organic acids test results also revealed a severe candida and SIBO that needed to be resolved. So this then leads to the question, well, if you do have high oxalates in your body, what do you do? Well, first things first, you need to establish the root cause of why your oxalates are high in the first place. So you take the organic acids test, which is a simple urine test. This will reveal whether you have genetic problems with oxalate metabolism, or whether your gut function is poor and you also have candida or SIBO, etc. Now, when you have established this, you can do a number of different things. So first, um, you go on a low oxalate diet for a period of time where you build your gut function back up. You also need to focus on killing off the yeast and bad bacteria, and these are often the driving force in high oxalates in your body. And on the organic acids test, you will see high levels of arabinose, which is a metabolite of yeast. And if you have extremely high levels of oxalates, then you can also consider taking magnesium citrate, as this will help lower the absorption of oxalates in the intestines. Reducing your fat intake will also help reduce the amount of oxalates getting into your bloodstream, and also certain strains of probiotics will help degrade oxalates better, such as Lactobacillus acidophilus and Bifidobacterium lactic. And it goes without saying that you should drink lots of good quality water throughout the day to flush out the oxalates. Now, I really can't overstate enough the impacts that high oxalates can have in your body. And if you have gut issues such as SIBO in conjunction with oxalates and also histamine issues, it will probably make you feel like you are dying. You will react to everything that you eat and your health will continue to get worse and worse. But when you do the organic acids test, the SIBO test and stool test, which I talk a lot about on this channel, you can then identify where your health issues are coming from and then you can start working your way out of the problem. And if you want me to do a video on how you interpret these test results, then let me know in the comments below. So that's the end of today's video. As always, if you have a question for me, then hashtag AskGojiMan in the comments below or send your video questions through to contact at GojiManNutrition.com. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable.